Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we were looking for the region's grave in this area when we found the wreck of the Parsifal. So, after doing that, which took a really long time, that was a huge and super cool storyline. After doing that, I just went back to New Winchester to resupply and end the episode. But this episode, we are going to the region's grave. Unless there's another massive wreck along the way or something. Uh, but yeah, Regent's Grave should be here. I can get into here, I think, from up here, almost certainly. There might even be a way in here. I don't know. The most straight and reliable way to get there, as far as I know, would be just to go straight east and then down here. But I do have a prospect to complete at Port Avon, so I might as well go there first and then try to come in here. I need to deliver three seeds to Port Avon, which isn't worth that much at all, but it's something. So I have a large amount of fuel, large amount of supplies, zero terror, I'm full on hole. Well, okay, I need one hole. Should I repair one hole? Yeah. It's always worth it. I mean, it probably isn't, but I don't care. Yeah, it costs three sovereigns. I mean, whatever. That one point could be the difference between life and death. So I'm pretty much full on stuff. I am going to bring one carefully packed crate of munitions because I feel like it tends to come in handy. Either trading with homesteaders for bronze wood or who knows, maybe I'll need them at the region's grave. I don't know if we're going to get resistance at the grave. I really don't know what to expect there. Anyway, I'm going to head down to Port Avon and I'll meet you there. Cry havoc. You hear a disturbance and, oh dear, it must be the dog again. The baritone percussion of his barking echoes through the locomotive. There's a pressing question to consider. Where's the noise coming from? Check the hold or the driver's cabin. <laughs> Let's check the driver's cabin. Someone whoops from the direction of the driver's cabin. The locomotive shudders and shakes like a racehorse on the cusp of their last great adventure. You enter to find the driver strapping goggles to the inadvisably big dog. <laughs> They're making dog meat. I mean, the character dog meat, to be clear, from Fallout 4. He won't leave, the driver shrugs, scratching behind an ear. And since he won't leave, I decided he might as well be properly equipped. It was an effort to get him to sit still, and he's showing no sign of leaving. Make a distraction outside, or steer the dog out by his goggles. <laughs> mm. I don't want to grab him by the goggles. That sounds, I don't know, kind of painful. Let's make a spectacular distraction outside. If you can tempt the inadvisably big dog's attention, he might leave. You exit the cabin with the driver and begin to raise a ruckus. You sing a giddy duet while banging a rhythm into the door frame. Luckily for everyone else, it does not take long for the inadvisably big dog to emerge, ears perked in the direction of the noise. <laughs> oh my god, I love the inadvisably big dog. I love that it exists. I love that there's random encounters like that for it. Oh, it's just great. Another fungal fragment. What do I need? Like, I could just get some fuel. Uh, yeah, let's harvest it for fuel, sure. One fuel. I have done this, yeah, I've done this before. Little sets of shaving knives to, uh, get the burnable stuff off. The vitriolic purple stuff and the limpid turquoise can be burnt. And Port Avon. Quiet day. Oh, right. Cheap fuel repairs. Well, let's get cheap fuel. Yeah, 20 sovereigns, two fuel. Let's get a poor report. How are we doing on welcome, by the way? Let's share some gossip. We have, we have 17. We'll be fine. It's up to five. Okay, it is actually kind of low then. Let's do it a couple times. Up to eight. 
give them the seeds. Yeah, 240 profit. That is really, really not very much at all. They have some hours. Mm. Given where I'm going, I don't want to buy anything. Uh, I want to have plenty of room. Who knows what I'll find. Is there anything at all that I want to do here? I mean, there's nothing to do at the inn, right? I still can't go upstairs. I could read some more speculative fiction. I mean, my terror is 3%. There's really not much of a point. No, we're good. Okay. I'm gonna head right here to not Trader's Wood. It's not actually Trader's Wood. It's actually there. But I'm gonna head here and see if I can get into this area through this little bit here. Here we go. Is that gonna go in where I want it to go? There it is. So it just leads up here, so what's the way in there? It's gotta be either here or here. Also, I'm coming up upon the Marauder base, so... I wonder if they've respawned from last time? The looming Bronzewoods cast deep shadows, perfect hiding places for outcasts, killers, and the desperate. Yeah, can I get behind this thing? Oh, I can. Or to the side of it, I guess. The light's getting very golden. Yeah, everything's amber colored. Or bronze colored. Gideon's bronze. that hook up here? Yeah, okay. So there's quite a few ways in here, actually. It seemed impenetrable before, but there's like three separate ways to kind of get into this general area up here by the circus by Port Avon here or down here by Traitor's Wood oh hi bees I don't have any honey on board so probably fine That thing down there, it looks like wood, but it's... It looks like wood, but it also looks like... Ooh. It also looks like it's made out of tendons or something. Like it's tendons made out of wood or something? I knew that was coming, I just didn't avoid it very well. Loot the hold. Uncanny specimen. Do 
you hear the heart of the wood, silent and solemn. That's the regent's grave? What is that opening? There's like glowing orbs around there. Those aren't candles or anything, those are orbs. Balls of energy. Before I go in, I just want to see what's right around it. I'm so curious what's going to happen in there and how it's connected to the children, right? The fungal children, the mothers of the children, something about the, the king abandoning their children? What is that all about? Here, at the heart of the forest, a great barrow built from ancient stone stands. Gates of star-forged bronze block the entrance. Open the gate, seal it shut forever, or leave. Wow, you could just seal it shut and just be done with it, huh? I'm too curious, I can't do that. <sighs> Open the gate. You have the three seals and a translator. You will discover what was entombed here. Into the traitor's grave. Before fitting the seals into the gate, the scholar examines the correspondence markings on them. Uh, something about to be... Something about to be used for visitation and a reminder to not visit unless in direst need. Your scholar translates, plainly baffled. Each seal fits a particular depression in the gate. In goes silver, then bronze, then gold. As you place the final seal into the metal, the gate swings inward of its own accord. A long stair, vastly wide, descends downward into the gloom. Below, a wind howls with all the ferocity of a starving wolf. I just want to read that part again. The rough translation of the correspondence is uh, something about to be used for visitation and a reminder to not visit unless in direst need. I don't think I'm in direst need, am I? I would know if I was. I mean, the stars are disappearing and that's a bit creepy, but as far as I know, I'm not in immediate danger. But, I mean, it's written in correspondence, right? I assume it was written by the sons, by the gods, and I don't trust them. Elizabeth absolutely does not. So I think Elizabeth would just ignore them anyway. At the foot of the stair is a burial chamber, fathoms high. Hanging from the roof is a skeleton. The bones are the size of locomotives. The skull palatial. Red correspondence sigils are branded on the bones. The trisected skull's mouth is sealed shut with chorister wax. The sigils on its jawbone mean to have gone further than one should, the scholar whispers. I like how your other option is just always leave, go away, far away, something like Get the hell out of here, but just put in different words each time. The bones are the size of locomotives, the skull palatial. Correspondence branded on the bones. That's not the bones of one of the sons, is it? I mean, it talks about a skull. Do the sun? I don't think the sons have, like, humanoid bodies, you know? But whatever it is, the bones are the size of locomotives, so it's... Something very different from anything we've seen. Let's unstop her, the skull's mouth.
not to be forgotten. Standing well back, you order your crew to light a fire below the skull's mouth. Soon the wax is congealing and dripping in long, slow splashes onto the tomb floor. The heat in the chamber rises. Dashes of wax begin to fall in heavy drops from the mouth of the skull. The wind rises to a frenzy. The last of the wax melts. The skull's jaw hangs open, and correspondence sigils begin to appear on the walls of the tomb. The cavern lights. The cavern lights in fierce incandescence, as the tamer spits furious correspondence. Your scholar struggles to keep up as they translate the sigils on the spot. As the tamer spits furious correspondence. What's the tamer? Hear the traitor's words. Okay. The scholar translates. The servant was given a task. They mean to complete it, but they have no body. They mean to chain the wood. Uh, no, tame it. They overstepped when they gave voice to the voiceless. They want to undo their error. The scholar falls silent. Sorry. What? Their eyes widen. They want one of us to help them. For a year and a day. Okay, there's a lot here. So the tamer is the servant that was given a task by, I assume, the king, and they failed. They don't have a body with which to accomplish anything anymore. They want to chain the wood, tame it, because they overstepped when they gave voice to the voiceless, and they're trying to tame the wood to undo that error. So giving voice to the voiceless, is that what we encountered at, I mean, that must be what we encountered at the Barrows of Silence, right? I mean, the Barrows of Silence were, I, I think they were initially silent, but then I like unstoppered or opened a cave, and then there was a bunch of like, screaming and words and all sorts of talking and all sorts of different languages coming out of the the tombs or something like that that were there is that where they messed up the barrows of silence were i don't know maybe they just did a quick fix and just like stoppered up the cave or whatever but didn't really fix their problem because they obviously made an attempt to silence the voiced We can explain that the judgment of the Reach has perished. Trader's Wood no longer has a master. Um, what would your task entail? What does a deceased servant of a deceased star want? Wait. Deceased servant of a deceased star? The judgment of the Reach? The king was a star? I didn't know that. Why not leave things as they are? The tamer has its freedom, though not its life. It could join the winds that howl in the heavens and leave the woods full of voices, wild and at liberty. Oh, 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 the giving voice to the voices. That must go further than just the barrows of silence, actually, now that I think about it. Think of the random encounters and all the stuff we've encountered in Trader's Wood. Talking flowers, screaming flowers, some of which kill people. <laughs> Remember when we failed and one of our crew died? Yeah, there's a lot of things that don't normally have voices. Mandrakes, flowers, caves slash tombs slash whatever was there at the Barrows of Silence. Except, give the Tamer your body so they can fulfill their duty. Or allow the scholar to fulfill the task. Wow, they'll they'll do it. Or leave. That's a lot. Well, the first ones are questions. Explain that the judgment of the reach has perished. Traders would no longer as a master. A task incomplete. The scholar struggles to convey your statement, but the tamer appears to understand. Correspondence flashes like lightning. Ah, I know this. A duty magnified. The rights due to the dead. The scholar pauses. The chain of being, the obligations thereof. Uh, I, I don't know this last one. I think it might just be grief.
A duty magnified, the rights due to the dead. Obligations. Okay, so yeah, they know. They know and they grieve for the king. But they were still given a task and they still want to do it. Fair enough. What would your task entail? What does the deceased servant of a deceased star want? Correspondence flashes in the dark like bonfires on Guy Fawkes' night. The scholar frowns. The vanquishing of all errors. The making right of the wood. Uh, something about work. Bloody, burning, taming work. The silencing of the voices and the stealing of tongues. The scholar shrugs. Uh, they seem to think it's self-explanatory. Why not leave things as they are? The tamer has its freedom, though not its life. It could join the winds that howl in the heavens and leave the woods full of voices, wild and at liberty. A scholar backs away as incandescent sigils go up like fireworks. It doesn't like that. A failure will not be commemorated. A debt will be repaid. Uh, that's repeated several times. Ah, uh, a transgression that must be unmade. The regret of having burned too brightly. To return humbly to one's place. Okay. Those answers weren't very illuminating, to be honest. <laughs> a little bit of a communication issue here. Right. Well, that's the end of the questions. So we either accept, give them my body, give them the scholar's body, not like forcing them, they're totally willing, or just leave. There's no way Elizabeth would want to give up their body for a year and a day. I mean, not to something they don't really understand, but certainly not to something that is a servant of a star, a dead star. We know how Elizabeth feels about stars. Yeah, so they would not accept. But... Damn, would they be curious. And if the scholar wants to do it... Okay. They step forward, trembling. Let me. The dismal paleographer is shaking, but he approaches the skeleton of the tamer. Please think of me. Should I not survive? Think of me as brave, he smiles. Burn my monograms, too. And then a wind is upon him. It howls as it forces its way into the empty places in his skull. He turns back to you, eyes unseeing, and runs from the tomb out into the wild of the wood. The grave is silent. Return to the parting glade in Traitor's Wood in a year and a day to complete this story. That is so fascinating. A year and a day. It's barely been over a year. That's a long, long, long time. I think it's barely been over a year. I think we started maybe sometime around March of 1905, when we first started the game, I think that was the date. So it hasn't been that much over a year, and I've been playing for what, like 40 episodes or something? It's gonna take another 40 more till I can do this. Probably. A year and a day. Okay, well, um, I need to write that down. The 2nd of August, 1907. Okay. I've got it written down. I'm so curious what's going to happen. Oh, it's so unsatisfying, but so tantalizing. The grave is quiet now. Leave the grave. You leave the long dark of the barrow behind you. I was expecting something longer. I'm really surprised how short that was. And what would have happened if I accepted? If I accepted and gave them my body, would that make time skip forward a year and a day and then we would find ourselves there? I'm 
so many questions and so long until we get an answer. Okay. Well, where to now? Is that a scriver I hear up here? I'm just heading north out of here. It sounds so close, where is it? Ah, it's in a fight with some marauders. Oh god, a lot of marauders. Let's join the fray. Explore the captain's cabin. Salon so Stude gossip. Captain's cabin. Salon so Stude gossip. I wish they had something else in their cabin. It's like the only thing they have is like sorted letters. Pretty sure there was another marauder, and of course the scriver itself. I oh. Follow the sound of gunfire. Recover his weaponry, heck yeah. Make a decent amount of money for that. It might be bugged. It still sounds like it's right on me. Like it sounds like it's coming from the center of the screen. Yeah, now it's gone completely. That was just a bug. The Rat Brigade is certain the dog will be the death of them. Not through hunting, but by amiable drowning. <laughs> oh, all right, so we are at Hybris. That's where I decided we should go. We have business here. Been kind of putting it off for a little bit. Kind of scared, honestly, of what we're going to find, but... Uh, we've needed to come back here ever since we talked with Madame Lumiere, and they gave us the mushrooms, and mentioned the... I think it was like a pillar of fungus that they found in the forest. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. I do want to continue a little bit more, but my voice is pretty tired. I have a feeling whatever's going to happen at Hybris now is probably going to be a pretty long encounter. Feels like a really big thing that we've been leading up to for a while. Confronting the mother or the children or both. So I'm going to save it for the next episode. Hope you've enjoyed so far and I'll be back soon.